All right, guys, welcome back to my tutorial on ensuring and reporting data validity. Again, um, I'm going to show you the actual code that I use for developing this data warehouse automation workflow. Um, I'm actually going to start us off in SQL. Um, and I'm doing this because, well, one, the code is custom, so you have to write it somewhere. Um, but also, you know, one of the things we talk about with data warehouse automation is that a good tool will be transparent. A good tool will allow you to leverage the skills that you already have, in my case, scripting and SSMS, um, and then integrate that into the data warehouse application. You know, that's kind of our ideal goal. So um, here on the screen, we've got just a really basic select statement that pulls data from one of the log tables. And if you'll recall, I said there's going to be a log table, an underscore L table for every table in the data warehouse. So if you have 30 tables, you'll have 30 log tables. And the current model of reporting would require you to write 30 select statements that join the log table. And let me see if I can find the message table. So here's finance transactions underscore M. Remember the M table tells you what the error number means. So error number one means that the field did not comply with our data validation rule and it's a severity of E. The E severity means that the record will not move into the valid table, right? Remember we have a raw table that has the the raw data pre-data constraints and we have the V table that has the, the valid data post all of the um, data validation rules and all that checking. So again, uh, my point is to say that if you had 30 tables, theoretically you would need 30 select statements against the L and M tables. And that could be a little cumbersome to develop. It also could be a bit cumbersome to maintain, right? What happens when I rename a table or add some new tables? In the most ideal of ideal worlds, I want a dynamic way of saying, find all of the tables and for each table, and I'm stressing the word for each, um, for each table, run this query and then insert the results of the query into my table called error table. Now when I was going through the initial kind of prototype of this, instead of um, dumping the tables into a table that already existed in the data warehouse application, I chose to create a temp table um, and, and just dump the data there, just so I can make sure that this proof of concept would work. Yeah. And the general gist of it is, I'm using a cursor to loop through all of the tables in my data warehouse that end with an underscore L. And then for each table that ends with underscore L, we're running the, the select statement, or rather the insert statement, that will deposit any errors in the underscore L table into my temp table. And then down at the bottom, you know, just to make sure I wasn't crazy, I ran my um, select statement on the temp table, and here are the results. You can see um, I've got data from finance transactions, and then, well, I see other, I've got some errors in posted sales transactions, okay? Um, and that's, that's important to know, right? Now I have a report that will tell me, hey, Jay, you've got some work to do, yeah? But again, ideally, I want all of this code integrated into my data warehouse application. So what does that look like? Like I said, you have to start by creating a custom table in your data warehouse. And you'll notice there are no data movements. So when I deploy this table, there will be, of course, nothing in it. Right, that just makes sense. There would not be anything in the table. Um, and then I need to add my script into one of the custom script actions. So here, if I edit the custom script, you can see I've got the code copy pasted. Um, at the top, notice that I don't have the create temp table. And in my insert, oh boy, here it is, insert into error table underscore raw. I'm gonna insert it into the raw table that 
um, the data warehouse application is creating. And then of course, when I do my execute phase, I have to use a pre-script. Oh, that one's wrong, take that out. I have to use a pre-script that says, when you're running the execution phase, before you start data cleansing, make sure to insert all of the, er the records into the raw table first. Um, and then every time I execute this table, it will run through the data warehouse, find all the error messages, and dump them into this table. Now we're only halfway there, right? The fact that we have a different way of recording errors, you know, that's, that's nice. What's really important is to make sure that we close the loop and use some sort of a reporting tool, whether SSRS, whether it's um, a Jet Professional, or if you, you know, want to use some more SSIS magic to send automated emails, it's up to you. Um, but you need some reporting tool that will let you know that you have error messages. And I'm going to use Jet Professional here. Interesting. Um, I'm going to use Jet Professional to build a quick table and I'll choose to include the fields error ID through severity. Okay, I can run, oh there's nothing in the table. Huh. That makes sense because I didn't execute it. Just kidding. Let's execute the table and refresh. Aha. And there are all of my errors. Now this report I would set up in the scheduler. Um, I would put, I would make it a, a, a dynamic, a trigger-based report. So basically, if the, if the table is empty, then don't email me the report. But if there's content in this table, email it to me so that I know, hey, we've got problems, we need to go fix things. This is particularly important for users that are doing custom development. Um, if you are building your own data warehouse from scratch, or even if you're adding your own custom fact tables or you're changing the way the standard projects work, um, yeah, you need to have a sort of tool that lets you know not only that you're following your business rules, but also report any instances of errors. My name's Jay Wilson. I'm the lead BI developer and data consultant at Onyx Reporting. You can reach out to me at jae at onyxreporting.com. Thanks so much for joining me for my presentation, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers. Bye.